What is going on, FA Nation? John Pepper here with James Grande. Welcome into the Fantasy Slam LB DFS Game Day Playbook Preview Show. We're looking at the DraftKings nine game Tuesday main slate. There's a six game, 640 main slate. So if you want to play some early baseball action, make sure you get in our Discord. Throw some questions, tag at FA Analyst in the Discord. And uh, we'll be happy to help you guys out with that early slate. But we are focusing on the nine game main slate. James, I believe you're the one on the playbook here for this day. So uh, get a good first look here. Uh, some decent pitching options, some matchups that we're looking at as well, including Coors Field. We got it. We're going to have it all week. So something we'll have to deal with. For, yeah. Next two series, of course. So yeah, it's an interesting slate. Um, some good pitching. Just looking at the initial look, some decent value pitching yeah. um, from what it looks like. And um, obviously we have cores. Yeah. Uh, looking at the stop pitching here. Now you got Jack Flaherty at home. But he's got Baltimore as a matchup for him at 10 K Dylan Cease on the road in St. Louis at $9,900. Logan Gilbert's home against Tampa Bay. You got Schwellenbach there on the road against Minnesota. So, you know, some tough kind of spots for Flaherty and Cease here. Um, are you interested in the top two price starting pitchers given their matchups? Yeah, I mean, um, Flaherty has essentially been matchup proof, and even in the games he's kind of struggled, the strikeouts have prevailed. Um, so I'm definitely interested there uh, in tournaments. Cease, I, you know, I, I've thought he's looked a little eh since the no hitter. Regardless, um, I mean that was 114 pitches. Strikeouts are down, the walks are up, the hits are up. We haven't gotten the best version of Dylan C. So 9,900, you know, he's fine for tournaments. Yeah. I do think like Logan Gilbert is probably the, the safest of this top tier. I know he's coming off, you know, a couple bad starts against really good teams yeah, in the Dodgers starts, and Boston. Though, right? But it's, yeah, I mean, the road starts and those are two really good teams that Tampa Bay is not. So um, I think 9,400 for Logan Gilbert is the safest play over $9,000. I'm going to keep saying it with Spencer Schwellenbach. Like that guy just has a massive ceiling, no matter what the matchup is. Cause he just gets so many strikeouts. So yeah. as long as Spencer Schwellenbach is exists and that's still who's pitching in his body, then I'm going to have interest, <laughs> even though Minnesota is a tough spot because like realistically, does he have more strikeout appeal than like Cease or, or Flaherty or the same? And he's yeah. 900 and a thousand dollars cheaper. So, um, and they're both in tough spots. Like I might, might as well save the thousand if I'm playing someone in a tough spot and just, you know, take the savings and play a guy who has as high a ceiling as the other two. Agreed. Uh, under 9k Logan Webb on the road against Milwaukee. Um, Eduardo Rodriguez at home against the Mets. He had a lefty versus the Mets there. Can't play Garrett Crochet. I know we've had people in our Discord ask. Um, he just he's he's not getting any innings. He is done after four. That is no matter what, no matter how well he is pitching, four innings, he had nine strikeouts, 22 fantasy points against Houston. If you think you can get this, sure, but you know, no, can't can't really play him right now. Gotta let him go. Uh Tobias Myers has been one of the better pitchers um in baseball here. He only got limited to four innings in that last start. Still had five strikeouts to earn runs. I don't know how you're feeling on him against San Francisco. Um, overall opinions of this mid-tier. Yeah, I mean, Logan Webb is fine. Um, when he keeps the ball down, he is fine. And he has largely done that since struggling, like limping into the All-Star break, was bad on the first start out of the break, uh, and then has just kind of been dominant since. Four of those five starts have come at home. This is in Milwaukee. Like, that's a different read but anytime he keeps the ball on the ground just yep. nobody hits him so um no pitcher at this price either is likely to go as deep into games as logan webb yep. i mean he is just he has complete he, game upside so yeah he has complete game upside so i i'm perfectly fine in tournaments getting there Eh, on erod he looked good as last start I don't know if this is the one though. Um, is it kind of wild? Start, this guy had no rehab, no nothing. He just like showed none. up. He's like, all right, I'm out here throwing hundred pitches. Just yeah, hundred pitches. pitches. Um, so like, eh, against the Mets, crochet. You you said it. This is like for anyone that remember before Anthony Davis was traded to the Lakers when he was playing twenty minutes a night for the Pelicans. It's like, can I play him? 
<laughs> I mean, you can, but at least he can get you a double double in, in yeah. that scenario. Like, if Crochet doesn't have nine strikeouts in four innings, he's dead because there's no win. There's zero win equity with Garrett Crochet unless they deployed an open. Right, that's your right. only scenario where Garrett Crochet can really even get a win. So, um, it's it's a no from me. Um, in my best Randy Jackson voice, shout out American Idol. No for um, me, dog. No for me, dog. Tobias Myers, sure. Um, I mean, this is a pretty good spot for him. Been like really good at just everything, right? Um, 287 ERA on the year, 256 over his last 10 games. I would say the one thing he does lack sometimes is strikeouts, which is obviously, you know, a little bit of a concern, but he's $7,800 against a team that can strike out um, at a pretty high clip. Yeah, so, Giants yeah. 25% strikeout rate over the last uh, 30 days here. So yeah, it's a good, I mean, it's a, it's a good spot for a good pitcher. Who's probably a little too cheap. Agreed. Um, any interest in Andrew Heaney at 7K? Um, yeah, he's been good. Um, he'll, he'll, he's been good. I would say you just you worry about pitch count with Andrew Heaney. He's a guy who racks up pitches really fast. And also they are not – he's on he's on the list with Sonny Gray where no matter – like very rarely do you see the pitch count – I was going to say, he has some days where he throws 100, then he has five straight starts where he throws 80, then he throws 97, you're like, why did we pull him six inning and earn yeah. run at 80 pitches here, but then we let him go 97 in the game? Right. He's getting, you know, yeah, I, I, very inconsistent. But another guy that has high strikeout potential, um, you know, that's one thing we've always known with, with Andrew Heaney here. Um, this is a surprising one for me. Um, I don't know if you've seen what Quinn Priester was doing at AAA, uh, but he was getting absolutely hammered for the Red Sox <laughs> at Worcester. Whoa. <laughs> absolutely Whoa. hammered uh, for Boston here. Um, I think his like most recent start actually went pretty well, but like overall his numbers in Worcester were, were pretty horrific. Um, I, I know they, they like the, the breaking stuff that he's got, but um, yeah. Yeah. Four starts, he's allowed 14 runs on 17 hits over 16 innings. So um, 3.9 walks per nine. This is going to be a Blue Jays day, I feel like. Not going to go Quinn Priester here, Michaelis, Quantro, Munoz. No value pitching for me after Heaney. Um, <laughs> Quinn Priester has not been a good major league pitcher. He wasn't in Pittsburgh last year, and he – he won't be here or he wasn't in Pittsburgh earlier this year. And he more than like, he won't be again. He was so, an average minor league pitcher for yeah, Pittsburgh. So average, like, average with no, with not a lot of strike strikeout yeah. stuff. So like yeah. um, I, one name we didn't mention is Jeffrey Springs at $7,500. Um, that would be the guy that I would have some mild interest in. Yeah. I say mild um, because you, you know, you, when you're talking about $7,500, there is a lot of strikeout appeal to Jeffrey Springs, but like there's clearly limitations, right? Pitch count is obviously he's returning from Tommy John. So like, there's just not going to be this extended leash. Um, yeah. And anytime you do start talking about strikeout arms, like those are the people that are susceptible to higher pitch counts faster, just because they're, they're, you yeah, know, unless they're pumping the strike zone there. Right. You know. So I'm, you know, if you're like banking on this play for Jeffrey Springs Springs to get a win, you're playing you're playing Jeffrey Springs for the wrong reasons. Yeah. Um, you're playing him in a tournament because you think he can have the seven to eight strikeout game, which he can because yeah. that's what Seattle's offense allows you to do. But also, you know, hasn't gone past five innings and two of the five starts he hasn't made it out of the fourth. So I was gonna say it feels like five innings might be where the cap is yeah, and not necessarily correct. pitches because he went eighty seven here. Then he got taken out at 76, and there and he was pitching well in this game. So if it wasn't a five inning cap, but it was like a pitch cap, you would assume he would have came back out for the sixth inning uh, there against Arizona. To your point, though, like this is a great matchup. Seattle over the last 30 days against left handed pitching, um, 28th in Woba, 266 for them. A 117 ISO is 28th as well. Batting average, they're 29th at 184. Strikeout rate third highest at 30.4%. So um, some elite numbers here for, for the matchup, uh, you know, win equity, probably not necessarily there because Tampa Bay has been as bad against righties as Seattle is against lefties and Logan Gilbert at home has been filth. So 
probably a better shot at Gilbert getting a win than Springs there, but that's a good call out. Um, I'm not going to go Simeon Wood, Richardson, or Manaya, so we're going to pass on yeah. uh, either of those two spots. Uh, catcher, again, uh, we, we have generally looked for some value at this position. Um, any individual matchups for you that stand out? Yeah, Will Smith is spending up $4,800. Okay. Um, he gets a lefty in Cole Irvin. Cole Irvin was relegated to the minors for a reason. He was pitching horribly. Um, so I do think this is a really, really good spot for the Dodgers and Will Smith. Um, Darno has been really good against right-handed pitching. He gets Woods Richardson. We get Stallings against Munoz for power in cores. Um, Yvonne Herrera, eh, he'll yeah. hit fifth probably. Any Boston catcher probably. Like Danny Jansen at 34 would be fine. Jansen, um, Kirk, 3,300 yeah. gets Priester. Carson Kelly... Like, Texas is a little bit interesting because they get to face the White Sox bullpen for five innings after crochet. <laughs> right. So, like, you know, that is at least something. Um, I don't think we'll, – we'll we'll get punts. Corey Lee, 2,400, you know, and gets Andrew Heaney. So, we'll get punts and, and potentially stuff for that. Really yeah, agreed. Uh, first base position here. Uh, Otani is seven thousand dollars of yeah. rare air here, getting the seven thousand dollar price tag. Uh, not even in course, just at home. Did you see? Points. I saw this on the Levitard show that his 40 40 season ranked would rank 11th yeah, in Barry Bonds's career. Yeah, season. it was the, what the F War sad yeah, or something like that. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. might be the first 50 50 player of all time, and his he's the 11th best Barry Bond season. Well, I mean, dude, he's striking out at a pretty high clip right he now. He is. He is. So that's not helping him. Um, again, Quinn Priester feels like he's about to get lit up here. So if you wanted to spend up for Vladdy, uh, who has still third base eligibility, that's fine. You are all in on Berger on the Monday slate. Now, granted, smaller slate on Monday. So Berger stood out. I don't know how you feel about his price tag here uh, on a larger slate. Uh, Tolia Olsen in this range. What are your thoughts spending up at first? Yeah, um, if you have the money to get Tozani, that's fine. He hits lefties with a lot of power. Vladdy is definitely in play. He's elite. Um, Berger in cores. I mean, you, that's the best Marlins power bat they have. Um, you can play Olsen in tournaments. I think Tolia is really interesting because the power and the power that uh, Rodri Munoz allows to lefties. So I think Tolia is really interesting. Not going to really play Freeman 5,100. I'm just out on Freeman. I think ROS just given what he's playing through. Um, and then I do think Pete Alonso is interesting at 5k. Sure. I mean, yeah, obviously a lefty matchup there uh, for Alonso in Arizona. Uh, Cost is under 5k at $4,800. You have the Mets. You mentioned, obviously, I think the last time we went through this with Martinez homered against the lefty. Yeah. He's $4,600 there. Um, Michaelis, I know we had a good start last time out, but if you want to go Padres, you got some guys for us in this mid tier. Um, anyone in particular that you would favor over? Um, I mean, Costas under 5k is very interesting. JD Mart is for no reason still first base eligible, so you can take advantage of that. Jonah Bride hits righties well. Josh Bell, um, gets Manaya here. Horowitz is first base only now, $4,000. So if you wanted to stack Blue Jays, using Vladdy at third is viable with Horowitz yeah. only being first base. Um, then you get like the Vaughn 3,500. That's potentially a home run waiting to happen. Uh, Justin Turner against lefty here yeah. in Jeffrey Springs. That's probably it, right? Probably, yeah. Yeah. All right. Second base. Uh, loud 49, but I like the Gilbert spot there. Um, another yeah, position I, that's just not a like yeah, spend up, nor and it really hasn't been for a while, right? Norby, uh, Lux is lefty lefty, Holiday gets Flaherty. Um, Estrada has been good lately, but he's in Myers. Wet Merrifield, as you mentioned, let off on Monday. He's 3,400 against Simeon Woods Richardson. That's a good one. Um, yeah. Will Wagner, he'll be in the Still lineup 2,500. Yeah. Kevin Newman, he'll be in the lineup 2,400. He's been good against lefties his whole yeah. MLB uh, lifespan. Agreed. I like the Will Wagner play. We know he'll in the middle of that lineup. 
Uh, third base, Devers is your top guy. Uh, most of these first basemen we've discussed already as well. Uh, Mid tier though, you got Viendos versus uh, Lefty and Rodriguez at forty eight. Yeah, and the power has just been pretty ridiculous lately for Vientos. A lot of home runs in August. I mean, he's hitting a lot of home runs in general. Yeah. But um, the only thing with Vientos is he strikes out a lot. I mean, a, a ton. Mm-hmm. Two two times a game over his last 10. Um, so that's obviously been a little bit of a concern. But uh, the lineup change to him hitting second has opened things up for him. So, oh, yeah, he'll, he stands out the most. Good projection in that lineup now for him. Uh, value of Suarez versus Manias 43. You mentioned Norby already. You got Josh Smith and Jace Young. Obviously, Jace Young is the lefty masher here, 3,700. Caminero, 35. Uh, more hits lefty as well, 35. So, some good under 4K plays here. Yeah, all those plays are perfectly fine. Um, and then like Barger, 2,600 against Quinn Priester, just to pick on Quinn Priester as much as humanly possible. Sure. I will say Texas has had a lot of struggles against lefties. We saw Matthew Boyd handle them the other day. They've been bad against really both splits outside of like your Corey Seager home yeah. runs, right? Like outside of Seager homering, they have not been. No, they've they have not, not. They have not been a good offense here. So I'm, again, I'm not recommending crochet. I'm just saying uh, fan graph numbers against lefties are not good for Texas right now. Uh, shortstop, Gunner, Tovar, Lindor, Seager. And Fitzgerald are your 5K and above shortstops. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if you've seen the uh, Francisco Lindor MVP odds of late. He's not catching. He's not catching Shohei, but boy, they are getting. They got pretty close um, after his grand slam, you know, to take the lead and uh, two home run game overall. I mean, he has he has been so great. So I, I think Lindor for me would probably be the guy over 5K. You could always play any of these guys. 5600 for Tovar and like a full slate feels too expensive. Like you were talking about the the Colorado pricing on the shorter slate, but it was a shorter slate. Like this is nine games and Tovar's 5600. dollars I don't know. Yeah. I don't really know about that. But uh, it's Miami. It is Rodri Munoz. So. I would say it is there. Um... Mid tier options for us doesn't exist. Toronto, Ernie Clement 39, just because it's against yeah. Priester. Yeah, like, uh, Rafael, as you mentioned, better splits against righties. Rojas, yeah, Rojas. Miguel Rojas has been really good. Um, offensively Dude, where did this, this come year, from? where did I don't know. Where? Uh, he heard Jazz Chisholm talking crap and said, All right, Jazz, I got you, dog. Um, all yeah, the I mean, incumbents that were in in LA saw them trade for all these infielders, and they're like, "Whoa!" True. When Lux and Rojas all of a sudden just start mashing, you know, like you know, they they, only, they, they let go Rosario and they threw Edmund in the outfield. So like, well, well, and then well, Edmund was then playing the infield because Rojas was hurt for like a couple yeah. games, and then like actually there, who is also thirty four hundred a shortstop right here, Tommy yeah. Edmund. So and we've talked about how good. He has been notoriously against lefties. Yeah. Geraldo Perdomo, 2023 All-Star, homered again on uh, Sunday. <laughs> a couple home great. runs in his last game, in the last couple games. Yeah. Two of his three in the last 10, so good on him. So, um, Let's see, other value down here. Yeah, I've got Jimenez if he's in the lineup. That's probably it. Yep. Right? Yep. Okay. Outfield. This is where you can find yourself spending some money. Yes. How are you prioritizing your spend ups? I mean, Mookie is Mookie's going to be as good as it gets. Sixty three. Jaron Duran, Brenton Doyle, perfectly fine, like they were on the um, on the Monday slate. You can always play Santander for a home run. Probably not going to Corbin Carroll, although he's been really good. If you want to play Corbin Carroll, he'll be low owned there. 54. I love Teoscar against lefties. Always have, always will. Will continue to shout Teoscar Hernandez's name from the rooftops when there's a lefty on the mound. And Cole Irvin is not the lefty that's going to like scare me away from playing him. So love that. If you want to play J-Rod against a lefty, he's been good against lefties. Bad since returning, though. It's so bad this year. Yeah, it's just been a, a brutal, brutal year. Um, Makes you wonder where he's going to get drafted or how much he's going to cost in the next not year. Not a lot. Not a lot. I mean, half. He's been good for half. one half of the last two years. So 
literally the second half of last season. He That's was it. The best player ever. Yeah. That's it. Um, he was trash all this year and trash first half of last year. Yeah, um, J Rod season. Maybe J Rod season starts in the minors next year. I don't maybe. Know. Uh, oh, that's a bold take. Uh, Jackson Merrill, forty-seven, yep. buying. Yep. Springer against Priester, buying. Uh, can go pro far if you want. J uh, Martinez is there at forty-six. We already talked him. Nolan Jones. If, he, if there's ever a time. Well, I was actually gonna say I know it's like Nolan Jones is the more flashy pick, but Jake Cave is right below him. I don't know if you saw Jake Cave hit second. Yeah. On the Monday slate, Jake Cave has objectively been better. Obviously, like you look, he has gray in his beard. Nolan Jones doesn't have gray in his beard. Nolan Jones is the higher prospect. Jake Cave is not the prospect. He has gray in his beard. Um, but, you know, yeah. Jake Cave's been just better. I, rem- I remember him from Minnesota. So, yep. Um, yeah, Yoshida, Marte, both those guys at 44 and good splits. Yep. Uh, Lourdes versus lefty at 42. Yep. Still more Toronto at Varsho. Jesus Sanchez, 42. Yeah, Sanchez Robert, 42. And Robert right there, both 4200 bucks. Great outfield spot again. Yeah, great outfield spot again. Uh, let's see. Value. You've been in on Peralta a lot. He's 36. He's good. Peralta, Stowers, 35. He gets the good split there. You could play Edmund here. Yeah. Uh, Larnack homered twice the other day. If you, I was there, are you going any of these Minnesota guys against Schwellenbacher? Probably, probably not, but just mentioning. Yeah. Um, if they're going to hit New Bar fourth again against a righty, there's potential there, I guess, with Contreras sure. being gone. Um, I think that's like live. He just hits in the middle of the lineup moving forward. Yeah. That's Loper, Loper Loper Fido. Fido. Loper Yeah, I hit second tonight. That's gonna be great. That's gonna be the almost an, an auto plug value play. I think if you're gonna end up double spending somewhere. Yeah, I mean if if priest, I mean priester. I shouldn't say if priester is pitching. You know, that's, you know, he's, he's gonna be on the mound. I don't know how long he'll be there for, but then you get the bad Red Sox bullpen too. So he is pitching. He will be, and you're gonna get the Red Sox bit. bullpen off of a, a bullpen game. As well, like Monday has Cooper Criswell as a long man. They're going to use an opener. Who knows how long Criswell's out there for? So you could have like a worn down Red Sox bullpen and Quinn Priest for making a start. So Toronto shooting up my list here of uh, top plays. I'm just going to, I'm just going to plug him in now. Um, Pitching back to building a lineup here. Uh, We were in on Gilbert, right? Very much so. Okay. And then what? Um, 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 I mean, there's like solid tournament options: seven thousand Androhini, uh, Tobias Meyer, yeah. seventy-eight, Logan Webb, I'm eighty-seven. Fine going Heaney, if you think they have a chance to win that game. Yeah, I mean, I think there's. I mean, they're. I know how bad they've been, but they'll be favorites. That's Pretty fair. sizable. Uh, let's go Kirk again. I think Grand Prix is going to get smashed. Yep. Uh, what's your number one spend up? Um, probably Betts or okay. Vladdy. Probably one of those two. Uh, probably can only That's get it. one. Betts is yep. fine. Then. Yeah. Um, uh, first, base I, mean, thing. I think doesn't, I mean, Vladdy probably makes more sense. Actually, we can get, we can get them both. Uh, we can get them both. Norby. 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 Uh, third base. Um, where's, you got anything else down here? You shortstop was a good, shortstop was a really good value spot because we had Perdomo 20, Geraldo 32, oh, yeah. Yeah. Edmund 34. Where's your lean of Roma, Ro, Rojas, Edmund, Perdomo? I mean, Perdomo's been the best of the, okay. of the three. Probably works. 4,200 third base in an outfield. Man, I wish we could uh, just comfortably 30, get to uh, so Vientos. Get to Vientos as a one-off, and then like a $3,600. Stowers to two-stack it, or you play... I'm good with Stowers. That works. I wouldn't know. I mean, what else would you do down there? One off? Well, you'd be one-offing basically anything else down here. So yeah. All right. 
Gilbert, Heaney, Kirk, Guerrero, Norby, Vientos, Perdomo, Loperfito, Betts, and Stowers here. A uh, little uh, Miami two-man, Toronto three-man, uh, getting one-offs on Betts and Vientos here. Gilbert and Heaney as our starting pitching. Uh, we'll be back at 5 p.m. Eastern time. James will be on the playbook, so he'll give you all further insights and analysis on today's nine-game DraftKings main slate. Until then, we'll catch you later.